Hello, church. It's so good to be back with you today, and I pray that you are doing well wherever you are at. I just want to take a moment and give the men of Georgiana a shout out for a great event on Friday night as they gathered to launch men's ministry and to launch men's small groups. Uh, it is a passion of my heart, if you will, to see men come to know Christ, because as I think our men grow in their discipleship, as they grow in Christ, so it goes in our community for the better. So again, a huge shout out to Jay Johnson, our men's ministry leader, uh, to your associate pastor, Ryan, who's done a marvelous job and to their leadership team. So thanks guys for doing that. Uh, so today we're going to do a quick overview of chapter four uh, before we unpack the chapter in the coming weeks. Uh, so one of the themes of chapter four is really uh, what we call it Georgiana family business. So Paul gets to the end of his letter. He's handled a number of issues. He's done some teaching. There's been a little bit of theology. And then now he's going to handle some family business uh, around the concept and theme of unity. So heading into that concept and theme, I want us to hear what Paul writes to the church at Colossae in Colossians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12. He says this, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Well, if you've been a part of Georgiana at any time during the last 18 and a half years of my ministry here, uh, you know that this theme of unity is a big honking deal to me. Uh, the, literally the words, the Greek words that for the, form the word community come from a word for common and then unity. So community is nothing more than common unity us coming together. Now I'm smart enough to know that we're all not going to be uh, like-minded about things. We're all going to have different thoughts about different uh, aspects, different ideologies, about politics and sports and all kinds of nuances in our community. Uh, but when it comes to Jesus, we should be one heart. We should be unified as it relates to all things Jesus and that that should be able to bind us together whereas the things of the world want to tear us apart. So, you know, it's been my ministry at Georgiana to prevent those things that are in the world from entering the church and tearing us apart. As we have dealt with the denominational drama over the last two or three years, I've literally done everything humanly possible to keep that drama outside our church so that we could focus on the work of Christ. So Paul gets to the end of the letter to this church that he loves so much, and he wants to drive home a point about unity. Now, here's what's interesting about this letter is that he calls out two women in the church by name. He calls them out by name. Can you imagine for the rest of eternity, these two women are forever immortalized by name for having had some disagreement in the church? Aren't you glad that I don't do that? Aren't you glad that I don't stand up and say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. X didn't tithe last week or, hey, you know, we had somebody sign up for an event, but then they didn't show up and, you know. Uh, it's a different leadership style that Paul has in that day than certainly I think I do. But I think it's such a big deal to him that he calls them out and then invites the community to intercede and bring them back together. So we're not talking about one person in one church and one person in another church and trying to reconcile those things. We're talking about people inside the same body having had a disagreement and the way that disagreement obviously was dividing the church and creating wedge. So Paul just intercedes. So we're going to find over the next coming weeks, not only this drive for unity and this uh, concept of discipline, if you will, but also his need to handle some family matters within the church, some final encouragement for the church at Philippi, and just for us to also experience it, to live in the shadow of that, and to know that the same word applies to us. So I, more than anything else, are not under any illusions that would, we would be like-minded. Man, I want us to be like-hearted. I want us to be one in heart around all things Jesus. I'm going to tell you, this is what binds my friend Titus Green, pastor at First Baptist and I together. There's lots of nuances between our churches that are that how we do it. The methodologies are different. But on that issue of Jesus, on that issue of the gospel, on our passion for the community, we are one. We are undivided. In fact, we often talk about, we challenge anybody to try to come between us. 
And that's how I feel about our church. We shouldn't allow anyone to come between us over things that are not going to matter for eternity. And that's the problem. One of the quotes I used a few weeks back in, in a sermon is, I think, so uh, applicable today. Uh, we all arrive in different boats, but we're all in the same boat now. And so we don't want to sink that boat. And being one is how we prevent that from happening. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope you're looking forward to us wrapping up Philippians over the next few weeks with uh, chapter four. And I pray that you have an awesome week and we'll see you next Monday.